Hey there everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Strix Outdoors. In this video, I'm gonna be cooking Sandhill Crane breast meat. I'm so excited, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this one. All right, now this is gonna be a pretty simple and basic recipe, but there's nothing wrong with simple, believe me, especially with a good piece of meat. So let's go over what you're gonna need. First off, you need a good cast iron skillet, or at least that's what I prefer to use for this. Kosher salt, I've mentioned it before, if you're using table salt to do steaks and things like that, you're really doing an injustice to the meat. Kosher salt is the way to go. It's my preferred way to cook these steaks. Coarse ground pepper, fresh is better, but in this case, I've got some that's already ground. Some powdered garlic. Um, I also use minced garlic. You can also add paprika. I won't be using it this time, but, but that's also a good thing to have. And also a good quality butter. Uh, in this case, because I'm gonna be salting the steaks pretty well with the kosher salt, this is unsalted butter. And of course, the star of the show, are the Sandhill Crane fillets that we've got. All right, so for this preparation, we're gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I'm gonna fire up the big green egg outside and get it to about 550 to 600 degrees. Pretty stinking hot. Then I'll be searing the fillets on the cast iron skillet and then finishing them off in the oven. Now I've been cooking my regular steaks like this for the last year and I've really enjoyed the outcomes. You can also sous vide these and finish them off like I've done in some of the other videos, but for this one, we're just gonna do the sear and, and bake method. But before we can start cooking, we need to do a little bit of meat preparation, and we're gonna jump into that just now. But before we do, if you're not already a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. My goal this year for 2021 is to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and your support in that would be greatly appreciated. Hitting the subscribe button below will not commit you to anything. If you hit the notification bell, you will get a notification when I do post videos. And of course, the only thing I ask in return for doing these videos and sharing this information is for you to bullseye that like button. All right, so here we have one of our beautiful Sandhill Crane fillets. As I mentioned in my processing video, this does have a layer of silver skin over the top of this, and we really want to try to remove that uh, because it does get a bit tough if we're if we're grilling it. Um, additionally, this has been in the fridge for about a day. It's a little bit easier to work on meat when it's really cold. Uh, the colder the better because it's a little stiffer. Um, and then after we get this all trimmed up, we're gonna rinse it off and try to get any blood that's residual and make sure we try to work the meat to uh, remove any pellets that might still be remaining if there are any. Um, I'll also be trimming up this fat and removing it as well. So for instance, on this piece, you can see a little bit more blood in the tissue here. So I'm gonna rinse to try to remove this. A little bit of, this is actually from the refrigerator drying, a little dark spot. Uh, so I'll trim that off as well. Now let me provide a little bit more context here. Remember that the silver skin is on the outside part of the steak. That is facing down against the cutting board. So I'm cutting down through the middle of the steak all the way to the bottom, but not cutting through the silver skin. Instead, I'm using that as a reference and then turning the blade flat against the cutting board in order to fillet the silver skin off the steak. Basically the same way you would be filleting the skin off of a fish fillet. I find that to be the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, uh, it is not an easy task. This is actually really efficient. It just uh, costs you splitting this in half. Look at that, beautiful, clean, just a little bit of stuff that I gotta remove and trim off, but way easier than trying to slice it off little by little. As I mentioned, really try to work all this bruising and blood that's remaining where the pellets entered the breast. You really wanna get that out. It'll make a big difference in the uh, taste. Uh, a lot of times when you get really gamey flavors, it's actually because of the blood uh, and especially when there was bruising from bullet wound or, or whatever. So it's well worth spending a little bit of time up front. This piece specifically looks like it took a few pellets, so I'm really trying to feel through it um, and make sure, or at least try my best to make sure that there aren't any pellets left in there. And there may be some parts that if they look especially bad with the uh, bruising or congealed blood that just trim them off. All right, so we got our beautiful fillets of Sandhill Crane here. We're gonna go ahead and season them. So I usually start off with applying salt first. This is the kosher salt again. It's kind of a fine line on how much salt you just have to adjust it. I like to salt pretty liberally. Um, 
but uh, you can definitely oversalt. All right, next I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of garlic powder. This is just a very light sprinkling. Again, this is to your preference. Go some coarse pepper. Again, fresh ground is better, but this is what I have right now. Pat those down. I also got some extra coarse, basically cracked pepper. Um, so I'm gonna put that on a couple of these. I like that. My wife and kids don't so much, so put on a couple. All right, we're gonna flip them and repeat. Also wanna make sure you get the ends uh, seasoned up as well. All right, so they're ready to go. We're gonna go and get the fire started, get the big green egg up to temperature. It's gonna take 15 minutes or so, and in that time, these are gonna rest. Oh yeah, mini pear burner, definitely the way to go for lighting your big green egg. Or for those that are not from South Texas, a weed burner. In either case, it's freaking awesome. All right, we're gonna close this up and let this come up to temp and then we'll, we'll get going with the grilling. All right, so we're up to temp on the big green egg. It's at a little less than 600 degrees. Fire's going plenty hot. And we're gonna set our big old cast iron lodge skillet on this directly on the grill over the fire, get it nice and hot. This is the YouTube debut of my 15 inch Lodge cast iron skillet. It's a whole lot of awesome right there. All right, I think this skillet is good and hot. We're gonna go ahead and test it out. That's where I like to add some of the minced garlic. And I went ahead and decided I was gonna do a little bit of paprika too. Now, word of caution, it is a good idea to use an oven mitt or something and some long tongs. I have gotten burned a couple of times by splatter from the butter and it is scorching hot. I did transfer them directly into an oven safe container so they can go straight into the oven. All right, so with two minutes on the grill on each side, this is what the doneness level is gonna be. All right, so with two minutes here on each side, this is the doneness level, which is a little less than what I want, so I'm gonna pop it in the oven for a little bit. All right, so we did two minutes each side out on the grill, eight minutes in the oven at 350, and let's see what uh, the result is here. So I've got a pretty good crust on it, which I like. And that just looks 
beautiful. That's about a medium consistency. So if you want to go a little bit more rare, medium rare, I would cut down to maybe about five minutes or so. Uh, if you want it rare, then just two minutes on each side and you're done. All right, so now for the moment of truth. Well, it looks great. It smells great. Let's give it a taste. Mm, mm, mm. That is so good. That tastes very much like a beef steak um, or a very good piece of venison. Tell you what, I definitely think this is a winner. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Well, guys and gals, that's it for this video. Be sure to hit the like button. Remember to subscribe. Help me hit that 10,000 subscriber goal for 2021. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.